We just reviewed what a relation is, and now I want to explore the properties of relations. The first property is the reflexive property, and a reflexive relation is a relation where A comma A is in the relation. So essentially the X and Y values will equal one another for all of the A's. So the question is, which one of these four relations are reflexive? and these should look familiar to you because we just talked about them. So which ones are reflexive? The question is, could I, if I'm entering values into R1, is it true that all A comma A's would be in this relation? And of course the answer is yes, because A does equal A. The other relation that would work for um, for reflexive is R2. So R1 we said was yes. R2, remember, as long as A is less than or equal to B, that means the two values A, we're saying A is less than or equal to A, and that, of course, is absolutely true. So AA would be a set, or excuse me, an element in that set. The others would not work because A cannot be greater than itself. And so obviously AA is not an element of that set. And A plus A is not always less than or equal to three. So it would work for zero, zero or for one, one, but not for any other points. And so remember in order for it to work, it has to work for all, for every A that belongs to that set. So our answer here is only R1 and R2. The next property is the symmetric property. So a relation is symmetric if and only if BA belongs to R whenever AB belongs to R. So essentially we're saying if AB belongs to R, then BA must belong to R. So which of these relations would be symmetric? Again, let's take a look. If I have a value, say 2, 2, that belongs to R1, because obviously 2, 2 would belong to R1, then the question says, if it's symmetric, then if I switch the order, it would also belong to R1. And of course, that's kind of a give me. Yes, this is going to be symmetric. For R2, we're saying A is less than or equal to B. And so let's say I had three comma four. Three is less than or equal to four. If I switched these, four comma three, that's the question. Is that also in R2? And of course the answer is no, because four is not less than or equal to three. So even though it would work for some, like three comma three, it doesn't work for all. R3, remember this is that A is greater than B, and again, this is going to be similar to R2, uh, where if I said four comma three, and then I switch them to three comma four. Three comma four is not in the set, so R3 is not symmetric. And last one, if A plus B is less than or equal to three. So again, we're not saying does it work for all values in the set, we're saying if A comma B is a value in the set, like say zero comma zero, or zero comma one, or three comma zero, you get the idea. The question is, if the, all of these values are in there, is it also true that if I switch the order, they're in there? So is zero, zero in there? Yep, that's less than or equal to three. Is one, zero in there? Yes, that's less than or equal to three. Is zero, three in there? Yes, that's less than or equal to three. So this one is true because it specifies that if this is in there, then BA is in there as well. If a relation is anti-symmetric, then we're saying that if A, B are elements of A, and both A, B and B, A belong to the relation, then it implies that A is equal to B. So let's take a look at what that means. We're saying if both A, B and B, A are ordered pairs in the relation, then A must be equal to B. So which of these relations are anti-symmetric? So let's take a look. We have um, A equals B. So we're saying if 3, 3, I'm just going to use an example, is in the relation, and obviously if I switch the order, 3, 3 is in the relation, then it implies that 
a equals b and that is true and it's not just true for the one example that i showed you it's going to be true for every single one because again we know that a does equal b because it's given to us right in the relation so that one's just kind of a silly one r2 says that a is less than or equal to b so again we're saying if both let's say four two no, 4, 5 would be in, which is a comma b, would be in the relation. But is 5, 4 in the relation? No. So I don't even have to check if a is equal to b because that wasn't in the relation. So let's take a look at one that is in the relation. We have 4, 4. Well, 4, 4 is in the relation, and if I switch the order, and you can see where I'm going with this, it's exactly the same as this one. Because of this or equal to, R2 is anti-symmetric because in order for both AB and BA to be in there, essentially we're saying the two values have to be exactly the same. For R3, A is greater than B. So is there any point where both AB and BA are in the relation? So again, AB, let's say we have 5, 2. 5, 2 is in this relation. Is 2, 5 in this relation? It's not. So remember back to when we were learning about logic before, if the first part of an if-then statement is false, like it is now, then the second part gets to be true, essentially. So R3 is in fact anti-symmetric because there are no values that are both um, a, b, and b, a are in that relation. R4 says a, b is in the relation um, if a plus b is less than or equal to 3. So again, if I'm looking at something like, say, 1, 2. 1, 2 is, if I added those, I do get something that's less than or equal to 3 because I get 3. And 2, 1 is also in the relation because 3 is less than or equal to 3. Does that imply that 1 is equal to 2? No, of course not. So this one is not anti-symmetric because those being equal does not imply that A and B are equal. Or, I'm sorry, those both being in the relation doesn't imply that A and B are equal. The last property we will talk about is the transitive property. And a relation is said to be transitive if whenever a, B is an element of R and B, C is an element of R, then A, C is an element of R for all of the values. So what I'm saying here is let's, again, I'm just going to show with examples. Now these are in no means a proof, so don't think that I'm proving any of these. I'm just showing you an example of why they are or are not. So here I have, say, 1, 1. So 1, 1 is in the relation and we're saying, okay, so A equals B, then that means one comma some other number, but this one has to be one, is in the relation, implies that one comma one is in the relation. And of course, that is true, so that is transitive. R2 says A is less than or equal to B. So let's say I have two is less than or equal to three, which is true. And then I have 3, so again, these two numbers have to match up, is less than or equal to 7. That is true. Does that imply that 2 is less than or equal to 7? Yes, not just for my example, but every single time that is going to be true. So R2 is transitive. R3 says A is greater than B. So again, you can see this is going to be similar to R2. Say I have 5 comma... 2, so 5 is greater than 2, and 2 is greater than 1. Does that imply that 5 is greater than 1? Yes, it does. So just like R2, R3 is transitive. R4 says A plus B is less than or equal to 3. So let's look at an example. Uh, let's say I have uh, 0, 3. No, let's not do that. Let's do... 3 comma 0. Is this true? 3 plus 0 is less than or equal to 3, so 3, 0 is an element of R4. 
And then I can say that zero plus say two is also less than or equal to three. Does that imply that three plus two is less than or equal to three? No, it doesn't. R4 is not transitive.